Hi, I'm Caitlin, and this is Book Chats, and this is the 2018 Best Picture Oscar tag that I created in collaboration with Rebecca from Wide Mermaids. The way we do this tag, and we have for the last two years, is that we go through the Best Picture nominees for the year for the Oscars, which are tonight. We make a question for each of the films. I want you guys to feel totally like free to participate in this tag. I really love it. It's my favorite thing I do for my channel all year. Rebecca and I really put a lot of thought into making questions that are unique and not what you've heard before in other tag videos. All of these questions are in alphabetical order of the title of the film they're based on because that's how the Oscar nominees are announced. So the first alphabetically of the best picture nominees is Call Me By Your Name. Teenage boys, like 17 I believe in the film, um, having his first relationship with another man and it is supposed to be really beautiful. What we chose for this question is to choose a book that has a queer love story in it. The movie itself is a male-male pairing, but if you have a different pairing you want to choose, go ahead. I have actually read very few books that have queer love stories in it, and so the one that I have liked the most that I have read is one that literally everyone has heard of, and that is The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. Um, I think what I liked about this book a lot is that Mackenzie Lee puts this story in a time setting that we are not used to seeing it. It's historical and she acknowledges a lot of the kind of struggles of the time period but still allows herself to have this really happy ending. Second movie on our list is The Darkest Hour. And this is a movie about Winston Churchill um, during World War II and honestly, Rebecca and I went back and forth on this movie, but the thing is, um, we try between the two of us to watch all the movies before we um, finalize our list, but this one I just kept not wanting to watch because everyone, all the reviewers basically say there's not a lot to it except for the performance by Gary Oldman. It's a lot of stuff that's retread that we've seen before, and even among Gary Oldman supporters, they're not that fond of this performance compared to some of his other performances. And so if you're willing to just throw a little shade with me, the question that we chose for this movie is, what is your least favorite book by your favorite author? Or I know it's really hard sometimes to pick a favorite author, but like what's an author you love and of their work, which one like works the least for you? My favorite author is Melina Marchetta and I have read almost all of her books. There's a couple that I haven't and the two that I haven't are related to this question right here. And that is my least favorite book by Melina Marchetta is Finnegan of the Rock. It is her first sort of fantasy book and it is the first book that really helped her to hit big in the United States and it pains me deeply because I think it's a lot it, it's good it's a good book but it's weaker than a lot of her contemporary work and so I read it and I happened to read it a year before it was released in the US because circumstances and I was like that was good but it wasn't great and it wasn't what I'm used to from this author and then everyone started talking about it and how much they loved it and how much it was great and like not reading beyond it in her work and it like frustrated me so much that I've literally never finished this trilogy. The third movie that I'm gonna go over is Dunkirk and uh, Dunkirk also happens to be a movie about World War II but it's about a very specific retreat that was really famous in England. It is told in such a fascinating way. Um, basically there's three storylines going on simultaneously so one is three weeks, one is three days, and one is three hours and they're being interwoven and you can actually on um, second or third viewings recognize in the background of some shots things that you see in other timelines and it is just a really fascinating way of telling the story and so we chose as our question that we want you to highlight a story that's told through multiple perspectives or across different timelines and I chose a story that is told across multiple perspectives and I think is much stronger because of that and it is Good Kings Bad Kings by Susan Nussbaum so this is a story about these sort of group homes for disabled teens and it is told through the perspective of some of the disabled teens and also some some of the adults that are kind of running the home and taking care of things and I think it is so powerful that it is told through multiple perspectives when you're in a certain person's perspective you see their personal like situation what they see all of the emotions that come with first person but you also get to see beyond that person's knowledge so you don't only see what one person knows about a situation you also see these other things question number four is get out and for this, the story is great, there's a lot of really interesting things going on, but there's this best friend character who is by far like the most fun, steals the show, 
he's like the audience surrogate of the whole movie. And I love that character. And so we chose for this question, choose a story where a side character steals the show or is your favorite part. And I chose The Unbeatable Squirrel Girl, which is a little bit of a cheat because it's a whole comic and not just a single book. There is this character, it's the main character, Dorian Green's roommate. Her name is Nancy and she is the best. She is the best character in the whole comic. And she gets to have a little bit bigger of a role as the comic goes on, which just gives me so much joy. She is awesome and wonderful. She knits, she has this fabulous cat named Mew. She is there to be like Doreen's voice of reason and to support her and is just literally the best character of the whole comic. Her fifth movie and fifth question is for Ladybird. It is this coming of age in high school and the complex relationship you have with your family and particularly that daughters have with their mothers. The question we chose is to find a book with a complex mother-daughter relationship. And the one I'm gonna go for ends up being the third book in the trilogy, so I'm sorry about that. That is Ellie Marnie's Every Trilogy and particularly the third book is Every Move. At the third book, the point of the third book in the series, the main character is having some emotional and mental repercussions from some of the things she's gone through in the previous books. And her family is like, we want you to be safe. And it doesn't feel like you're safe with this boy you've been dating that you've been getting into the situations with. It doesn't feel like you're safe when you are doing all of these things. And especially like the mom, but also the dad, like they're kind of trying to protect their daughter and like to help equip her for the world and she is trying to like protect them from these like outside forces that she sort of brought into it. It's a book where the parents really care but they also have all of these other things working in their lives. They have had to move in from the country because of finances. They are working two or three jobs trying to keep everything together. It has this struggle of like wanting to provide but not necessarily being able to provide. The sixth movie that I'm going to talk about and the question we have is for Phantom Thread. And this is a sumptuous, beautiful, very well shot film about this fashion designer and the woman who is his muse and their really messed up relationship. Have you guys ever had a situation where you go to a movie and you are like, wow, that relationship was messed up or whatever, and you come out and then people are like, that was such a beautiful romance. And you're like, we didn't even see the same film. If you think that was a romance and not a really messed up relationship, we did not even see the same movie. <laughs> That's the experience I had with this. So for this question, I want you guys to pick a book or a pairing that people always talk about like it's so romantic and the romance is so great, but it's not. And this is like my favorite, I think, question on the list because what is on your list might be one of the books that I have literally called a romance. And what is on my list might be a book that you thought was a romance. I ended up on a book that, I mean, the book sort of is like a contemporary romance, but the romance aspect of this book like kill it for me. I still gave the book three stars but it would have been higher if I didn't hate the romantic lead so much. I like thought he was trash and not worthy of the main character. I thought he made some decisions that were never like explained in a way that made me satisfied with him and like believe that he really cared. And that book is Dumplin' by Julie Murphy. I love this book. I love the friendship aspect of it. I loved so many things about it. I loved how so Texan it was. But I did not love the main love interest. I thought that he made some decisions that were like really not in favor or nice or and otherwise like good to the main character at all. And they were never really excused or explained or like he never really was like, yeah, I recognize that that was an awful thing to do and I'll try to be better in the future. And that really frustrated me. I really thought that our main character deserved better. The seventh movie and question that we're going to talk about is The Post. This is a movie about the Washington Post publishing the Pentagon Papers against kind of the White House's wishes in a way that actually threatened them. I think the White House threatened to um, like prosecute them standing up to authority in a way that you care about. And so our question for this movie is a book that challenges prevailing power structures. I thought about this one for a long time because to be quite honest, I don't read a ton of books that challenge prevailing power structures. You know, if I were a cool kid, I would probably have like a James Baldwin book or something here. But instead, I am choosing a book that is actually a fantasy novel and it is challenging power structures within that fantasy world 
but I'm putting it on this list because it challenged me to think about the power structures in our world. And that is The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. It's so well done. It's so well put together. But one of the things that is like a really strong theme in this book is examining the power structures of this fantasy world and whether or not they need to be destroyed. So it's not necessarily a book that is directly opposing power structures in our world today, but it is a book that caused me to question the power structures I live around. The second to last penultimate movie and question is The Shape of Water. And this is a movie that is sort of a fable of the 60s era. And it is about a woman who is mute and works at a secret government facility. And while she's there, she finds basically the creature from the Black Lagoon and sort of forms a relationship with him and then helps him to escape and kind of in the escape falls in love. Two options for this question because we want you guys to be able to choose the one that's easier for you to answer, but they're two totally separate questions. They're just both pulled from this movie. And the first question is the one that I'm actually going to answer, which is uh, find a book with disability rep because the main character in this movie is mute. She uses sign language throughout. Separate question um, that is also related to this movie is choose a book with a key character who is non-human, like the creature from the Black Lagoon in The Shape of Water. So I chose to choose a book with a disability rep, and that book is Your Welcome Universe by Whitney Gardner. The main character is deaf, and she is being mainstreamed in a mainstream school for the first time because she got kicked out of her DHH school for some graffiti. So the book features a main character who is deaf but it is not about her deafness and that is one of the reasons I wanted to choose this book for this movie because the movie The Shape of Water features a mute main character. It is really important to her character that she is mute but the book is but the movie isn't really about her muteness. The movie is about her falling in love with this fish man and all of the forces around them and who it really is a monster. This book your Welcome Universe is really about friendship and who we can trust and who we can't. And it just happens to have a main character who's deaf and that definitely informs her world. And both of her parents are also deaf. She has two moms and they are both deaf. All of those things contribute to her identity and contribute to her worldview and the structure of the book. But it's not a book about deafness. It's a book about street art and friendship. Final movie and final question for this year's best picture tag is Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, which is about a woman who fights in a very antagonistic way against the local government for what she believes was the incomplete investigation of her daughter's death. That's what you kind of need to know for this question, which is to choose an unlikable character you find yourself rooting for. Frances McDormand's character in this movie um, she is fighting in a way that we want to support. We want to support her fighting against kind of this complacent local police station and local authority that we don't really believe is doing their job in an adequate way. But she's just not a likable person. She does some things throughout the course of the movie and you flash back to things she did before and you're like, I don't know if I really like you even though I like what you're trying to do. It was so hard for me because I'm like so bad at reading characters I don't like. I ended up choosing a book that I actually have a discussion video for on this channel because I have such mixed feelings about this book and this person in particular and how they wrote it. And it's actually a memoir. And so this is a real person. Um, so please don't come after me, um, Dan Lyons, for saying this about you. The book is Disrupted by Dan Lyons. It's about his time at a startup's specifically HubSpot. He wrote the book with as like a personal memoir about his time at HubSpot, but also he pulls in knowledge and data from his job as a tech reporter and like reporting on Silicon Valley and his background there. And I really like a lot of what he has to say about like tech startups in general and a lot of what he is saying about like the greater startup world and new work and like the way that work today and jobs today are different than they were 10 or 15 or 20 years ago. But a lot of what he has to say about his personal experience just made me roll my eyes. He basically waltzes in to HubSpot and expects them to treat him like he is the best ever just because of his name and his background. I have such mixed feelings because a lot of what he says I love and a lot of what he says I hate and there's like nothing in between. It's like on both perspectives. So I think that he typifies more than anyone else in the book's that I talk about and have read uh, this character where you really support some of what they do and say and are fighting for, but you can't necessarily support them as a person. 
I would love you guys all to go check out, check out Rebecca's video. She does a fabulous job um, with shooting and editing and answering these questions and her videos are always better than mine. But also what I would love most of all is any of you out there watching this, if you would sit down and like go through these questions and make your own version of this tag video, I would be incredibly, incredibly happy to watch. But anyone who is watching this who wants to do this tag, please do, please. We would be so overjoyed to watch your answers to these questions. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys later. Bye.